Hey guys, welcome back to Passing Money. My name is Alex and this is Kirby. Um, on this topic, we're going to be talking about the uh, recent podcast video that actually came out between Graham Steph and, and Dave Ramsey. So mm-hmm. I know Kirby, you're a big Dave Ramsey follower since the beginning. I know I kept up with Dave Ramsey when I was getting started too, but I also really enjoyed watching Graham Stephan's videos. Uh, it's kind of how I learned frugality and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. What were your thoughts on the on the podcast? What did you think? I thought it was kind of interesting how we could see one investor who uses leverage and another who doesn't and see them collab and basically talk about finance. Um, there was a couple of interesting points in that video. Um, one part was everybody thought Dave Ramsey just went over and beyond leveraging itself and the, the first point, this is the first point I pulled out of it. Everybody, and this is according to the books that I've read of Dave Ramsey and listened to Dave Ramsey um, so, you know, through the radio, AM radio, that's how old I am. I was listening to Dave Ramsey when it was, you know, AM radio. But it was, hey, I used leverage or I used financing when I was younger. And then I made a million, I was a millionaire in fi- financing real estate property. And then I, uh, and then I went bankrupt. And I always thought that, okay, maybe he, Maybe he used leverage wrong. Maybe he did something wrong, did, you know, whatever. And that's how he fell into that, you know, conundrum of not being able to handle his bills. But the Graham Stephan video with Dave Ramsey, it brought it to light. It wasn't that he, that he was doing anything wrong. It was just the fact that the bank reached out and wanted all of the funds ASAP, right? During the financial crisis, they wanted or before the financial crisis that he had so much leverage and he'd been flipping houses on point and he was never late on payments or nothing like that. But it was just, he had enough debt where the bank can call the loans and that's all it was. And Dave Ramsey, of course, at the time and during that, during that period, he just didn't have the, the capital because of the, the way he had his business structured that he couldn't pay back the loans all at once so it you know put my put a light on it a little bit different but still all in all he pivoted changed the ways that he was doing things and he went about it another approach which is all cash which i don't have any complaints about uh uh, but i'm glad he shed light on that and it brought more of that to the forefront to understand that if you're leveraged and you don't have you know grant cardone type you know, billions of dollars out there, out there in, you know, bank notes. That's what I call it, bank notes. Out there in bank notes, then the bank could call it and just put you in a bad situation as an investor instead of, you know, the inverse of, you know, if you got a billion dollars, billion dollars or so out there in bank notes, the bank will have a problem where they will be less likely, they will be more likely to help you with more money than less money. So it was a good video. That was the first thing yeah. I took away from it. Yeah, one of the points I really liked on that video, it, it was cool to see uh, Dave Ramsey not um, be so strongly opposed to Graham Stephan's way of investing. Um, you see a lot with uh, on the Dave Ramsey show where uh, callers that call in saying that they're using debt to um, or leverage to invest. Uh, they get shut down and then all the comments you see, they shun, you know, that person calling in. It was cool to see Dave Ramsey talk to Graham Stephan and basically just lay out on the table saying the issue we have with leverage is just that there's more risk involved. So it's not to say that it can't work or it can, but there's just more risk and that's that's it. And what they teach is just not to take that risk. And but the thing is, is um I I got to pivot a little bit from that video with Graham Stephan and uh, Dave Ramsey, but if you ever listen to Robert Kiyosaki, and everybody know Robert Kiyosaki is leverage debt, leverage debt, just like Trump leverage debt, and if and that's why always people try to pit these two 
mindsets against each other. They Robert Kiyosaki against Dave Ramsey. And Robert Kiyosaki will tell you, Dave Ramsey and him are very, very, very good friends. Not, not enemies at all. Very good friends. And Robert Kiyosaki will tell you what Dave Ramsey is saying, that is great for 90% of the world. 90% of the world, because 90% of the world don't want to learn about financial literacy. Dave Ramsey will tell you the same thing. But Dave Ramsey thing is going out to the masses. The masses is easier for them to follow a script. And then if you do this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or whatever, you will, you will get there. And it's easier for them because they don't want to under uh, they don't want to understand or obtain that financial literacy or financial knowledge to get there. And Robert Kiyosaki would say, for the majority of the world, Dave Ramsey method is the best way to go. And then everybody know Robert Kiyosaki is, you know, leverage, leverage, use debt to build wealth. And Dave Ramsey will tell you, yeah, I do this because most most people don't want to don't want to learn or put the thinking caps on to learn that extra leverage. So that's why I teach this way. But Dave Ramsey understands that financial leverage, because he said it in the Graham Stephan video, is you can grow faster using leverage. He said that in the video. And and that's the that's just the thing that people will misconstrue because they don't understand. They just think Dave Ramsey don't understand the leverage side. He does understand it. But he understands, like he said in the Graham Stephan video, nobody factors in risk. Risk. If you go all cash all the time, then there is the, the level, the ability of risk is way lower than somebody using leverage all the time. Right. And I agree with it. I agree with him wholeheartedly. Just I agree with Robert Kiyosaki, wholeheartedly. If you don't want to understand financial literacy, you need to go 100% the Dave Ramsey method. No matter what everybody's saying on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook, whatever, you need to go the way that your capabilities are able to support them. And if you can't disincern the two, and then you need to go to Dave Ramsey method. If you Understand what Dave Ramsey is trying to say and understand that concept and then say, okay, I understand that. Uh, so I have to mitigate risk. So then you can bring in the Robert Kiyosaki method of using debt, but still also mitigating risk. But you can't just go out there willy-nilly just thinking, oh, Robert Kiyosaki is right, Dave Ramsey is wrong, because that is not the truth. No matter what, the people on YouTube, Instagram, social media is trying to pick them two together against each other is not the truth. It's just two different philosophies that both of them understand each other, but nobody wants to factor in risk because everybody just thinks, oh, is this this way or the other way? Risk is a huge factor that nobody wants to factor in. And in the real estate game, like Dave Ramsey said in that video, nobody wants to factor in risk. That's why I always bring up, that's why we always talk about here on the channel, the real reality of being in real estate. That's why when I say if you got the uh, one real rental property and let's say you put a low amount down or you don't have any capital in reserve and stuff happened, like we talked about in the previous video with the same accident that just happened. If I didn't have $5,000 or, you know, yeah, it was roughly $5,000, $5,000 to pay for that electrical line in that room. Then I'm sitting there waiting for the insurance company to reimburse me. Mm -hmm. While I'm waiting for the insurance company to pay me, the mortgage payment is still going to come. The mortgage company's still going to ask. Right. Those are the risk factors that everybody don't want to factor in and they just make it seem like it's all oh, just hearts and bubbles and all that when you buy real estate property. And the truth is not. And that's all Dave Ramsey trying to reduce is mitigate the risk of real estate property because if you own it in cash and that same incident happened that happened to me, then you don't have to worry about somebody calling to ask about mortgage payment. Because just because you have insurance and it might cover the tenant's rent if you was, you know, following a claim against my, uh, if I was claim following a claim against my uh, insurance company, 
that don't mean that the insurance company is going to pay me those tenants rent on the first. I got to sit there and bear it until they unask the cash. And that is the risk that he's talking about. But nobody want to factor it. So I like the fact that Dave Ramsey brought up that point altogether. But it's never Robert Kiyosaki or leverage against unleverage. It's the fact that nobody want to factor in the risk when they're doing it. No matter who it is. No matter if it's Meet Kevin, if it's Graham Stephan. Or um, what's what's the other guy name that we like that only talk about real estate? Chandler Davis. Uh, Chandler Davis Smith. They always want to talk about Dave Ramsey. They don't know what he's talking about, but they don't ever factor in the risk element. And the risk element is real because one thing for sure, two things for certain. We know something bad is going to happen. The question is, are you prepared for the bad thing to happen? Right. So there we go. That's that's my yeah. view on it.